Hi, I'm Claire, and it's time for another list of anticipated releases. In this video, I'm going to talk about books that are coming out in July, August, and September of 2019. I've got a shelf on my Goodreads that's got all of these books on it, and the link to that is in the description box below. So if you want to check out any of the books that I'm talking about today, and maybe save them to your own want-to-read shelf, that's the easiest way to go about it. First up, we have quite a few exciting releases on July the 9th, starting with Wilder Girls by Rory Power, which comes out from Delacorte Press. I've seen quite a bit of buzz about this one on booktube, and let me tell you, I am on board the hype train. This is a boarding school book. It's set on an island right in the aftermath of a viral apocalypse. The school is under quarantine because this mysterious virus killed all the teachers and then started to infect some of the students and change them. The remaining students are waiting for the cure that they were promised to be delivered to them. But when her friend goes missing, our main character Hetty will do anything to find her. Yes, basically yes to all of these tropes in every bit of this premise. Also on the 9th, we've got a new novel from Cherie Priest. This one is called The Toll, it's out from Tor Books, and it all starts on State Road 177. Drive that route from east to west, and you'll cross six bridges. Take it from west to east, and you might find seven, but you'd better hope not. Dun dun dun! We've got a couple on their honeymoon finding this creepy bridge, and then something mysterious happens to the wife Davina. She disappears while her husband Titus is left to figure out what happened. I am very excited for a new Shuri Priest. She's one of my favorite authors. Her writing choices and sensibilities just tend to work really well for me, so I just can't wait to pick this one up. Still from Torbox, and still on the 9th, we have The Survival of Molly Southbourne by Tade Thompson. This is a sequel to his previous novella, The Murders of Molly Southbourne, and once again we follow Molly, a young woman who lives by only one rule do not bleed. Because when she bleeds, murderous clones of herself literally sprout fully formed from the ground to try and murder her. Now I won't say any more because I don't want to spoil the excellent first novella in this series, but let's just say I definitely want to know where this one goes. And finally, on July 9th, Spin the Dawn by Elizabeth Lim comes out from Knopf. It is a YA fantasy about a young girl called Maya who poses as a boy to compete for the role of Imperial Tailor. She embarks on an impossible journey to sew three magic gowns for the Emperor's reluctant bride-to-be. The dresses are to be made from the laughter of the sun, the tears of the moon, and the blood of the stars. Now, I love anything about costuming and dressmaking, and also a girl dress as a boy to do forbidden thing is one of my favorite tropes, but I'm also quite intrigued by the bit about the three magic dresses, because it is right out of Podan, which is an incredibly disturbing fairy tale about a gross king who wants to marry his own daughter and she has to escape him. So I'm assuming Maya is going to end up somehow saving the emperor's reluctant fiance who she's making the magic dresses for and I am here for that. On July 16th, we have This Is How You Lose the Time War by Amal El Motar and Max Gladstone. It is a novella, it's published by Saga Press, and it is a love story between two women who are spies on opposite sides of the time war. From what I can tell, this is mostly epistolary. They are falling in love through these time-traveling letters, and that's how we get the story. Yes, please! Between an enemies to lovers romance, time travel shenanigan, and a story told through letters, this ticks so many of my boxes. Plus the fact that it's written by these two authors that I've heard such great things about. I have a review copy of this, and I think I'm gonna just start it as soon as I'm done filming this. Finally, for July, we have Gods of Jade and Shadow by Silvia Moreno-Garcia. This comes out from Del Rey on the 23rd, and it is a dark fairy tale set in the Jazz Age and inspired by Mexican folklore. Cassiopeia dreams of a life far from her dusty small town in southern Mexico, yet that life seems as distant as the stars, until she accidentally frees the spirit of the Mayan god of death, and he sends her on a cross-country adventure to help him recover his throne from his treacherous brother. I really enjoy Silvia Moreno Garcia's writing, especially her world building, and I do really enjoy a well done quest plotline, so this seems right up my alley. I've only got two books to talk about.
card for Argus, but they are pretty exciting ones. First up, we have a new standalone by Becky Chambers coming out from Harder and Starden on August 8th in the UK and from Harper Voyager on September 3rd in the US. To be taught if fortunate is a novella set in a world where instead of terraforming planets to suit human life, space explorers modify themselves to better suit the planets that they're exploring. Whew, what a premise. I mean, at this point, I'm gonna read anything that Becky Chamber writes because I've been enjoying her work more and more with every book. But honestly, this premise is so cool. I would want to pick it up, even if I knew nothing about the author. I just cannot wait to see what she does with it. On August 20th, Tor Books publishes a new novel by Marie Brennan. Turning Darkness into Light is a fantasy of manners set in the same world as Marie Brennan's previous series. But in this book, we follow Audrey Camhurst, the granddaughter of Isabella Camhurst, who's the protagonist and the narrator from the Natural History of Dragons series. Audrey is hired to decipher ancient tablets holding the secrets of an ancient civilization of dragons, but of course there is more going on than simple archaeology and soon Audrey finds herself in the middle of a conspiracy to incite rebellion and war. I love me some dragons and I especially love the world building in A Natural History of Dragons, the way the various species of dragons are developed throughout the series, so I absolutely cannot wait to get back into this world. Having Audrey working on a piece of translation as the backbone of the plot is really just extra cabinet for me. <laughs> and now on to September. On the third, we have Well Met by Jen DeLuca. This is out from Berkeley Books and it is a romance novel set at a renaissance fair. Our protagonist Emily has just relocated to this small town for the summer to help her sister recover from an accident and of course she gets roped into volunteering at the Ren Fair. The love interest is Simon, the school teacher who is running the volunteers team, who Emily finds insufferable but who she can't stop thinking about. I'm not gonna lie, I was hooked straight away by the premise of a romance novel set at a Ren Fair, but once you add in the enemies to lovers component, I am 100% all over this one. I'm hoping it's as fun and light and fluffy and refreshing as it sounds because it sounds like an absolute treat. Also on September the 3rd we have a song for a new day by Sarah Pinsker which comes out from Berkeley Books. This is a sci-fi novel set in a world where large public gatherings have been outlawed, people can only meet online. This makes concerts impossible but of course there are people willing to break the law for the love of music. Former rock star Luce Cannon remembers how things were before, but now she has to perform in secret, putting on illegal concerts to try and keep her connection to music at all costs. On the flip side, Rosemary barely remembers the before. She's only ever worked online until she lands this new job. She's tasked with discovering amazing musicians and bringing their concerts to everyone online via virtual reality. But of course, in order to do that, she's going to have to find and attend those sweet illegal concerts. This is a really captivating premise and I've loved Sarah Pinsker's short fiction for a while, so I'm incredibly excited to get a novel from her. Side note, is it me or is this cover going to have this cool bluish green foil all over it? Because I am into that. On September 10th comes Gideon the Ninth by Tamsin Mio. This one is out from Tor.com Publishing and they have been describing it as lesbian necromancers in space, which sounds pretty bloody good to me. Gideon is an undead swordswoman who is done with all this necromancy bullshit. But before she can escape the clutches of the Ninth House, her services are once again requested. The Bone Witch Harrow, Reverend Daughter of the Ninth House, faces a series of trials that aren't so much life or death as they are immortality or complete oblivion, and she can only face her trials with her sword Gideon by her side. Do I even need to go dun dun dun? This sounds unbelievably cool and violent and heart-wrenching and I cannot wait. A few of my friends have already read this for review and keep talking about how great it is. This is probably the one book on this list I am most excited to read. It just sounds like it's going to be a wild ride and I am here for that.
Next we have The 10,000 Doors of January by Alex E. Harrow, which comes out from Red Hook on September 10th in the US and from Orbit Books on 12th in the UK. This is a historical fantasy novel about a young woman called January. She is the ward of a wealthy man who collects peculiar treasures and artefacts. One day in his sprawling mansion, full of strange curios, she finds a mysterious book, a book that carries the scent of other worlds and takes Tales of adventures, dangers, and secret doors. Now the blurb for this one is a little bit on a vague side, but I'm going to assume it's portal fantasy and this mysterious book actually allows January to travel to all these different worlds. This is Alex E. Harrow's first novel, but I've enjoyed her short fiction before, so I'm keen to give this one a try. It sounds pretty fun. And finally, there is The Future of Another Timeline by Annalie Newitz. This one comes out from Tor Books on September 24th, and it is a time travel thriller. In 1992, teenage riot girl Beth witnesses a murder and helps her friend dispose of the body, setting them both on a path of escalating violence and vengeance. Meanwhile, in 2022, time-traveling geologist Tess visits key moments in history to fight for change. Soon, war breaks out across the timeline, threatening to destroy time travel and leave only a small group of elites with the power to shape the past, present and future. Thrillers aren't usually my cup of tea, but I do love time travel and history and politics. I'm also quite intrigued to see what Annalie Newitz does with this premise. I suspect it's a lot more sweeping and feminist and radical than the blurb lets on, and I am very, very okay with that. So that's it, these are the new releases coming out in the next three months that I'm most excited to check out, but of course there are many more books coming out that I might have missed, or maybe they aren't my cup of tea but you're super intrigued by them, so do let me know in the comments below what new releases are you most looking forward to in the next few months, is it one I mentioned here or is it something else entirely I want to know. If you'd like to see more from me, you can check out a previous video on screen right now. And if you haven't yet, please hit the subscribe button that's on my face for a new video from me every week. I've been Claire, thanks so much for watching, and see you soon.